Hey, y'all, and welcome back to another episode of Catch That Minis, where the fans are the stars of the show. And I am naturally a leaf, and that's my bro. They are. Yes. And as you know, Catch That Minis, we're talking to fans about their favorite songs and getting to know people that way. Yeah. So today is a very special day. Very special. Because again, it's one of our friends. Yes. Um, and it is the lovely Renee. Hi, everybody. I'm glad to be here. I'm here. I'm giving Mariah Carey a little bit, you know. I'm ah! to to the 90s, you know. <laughs> we have a lamb in the building. <laughs> yes, we have a lamb. And I, and I actually thought she was going to come to us with, 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 with Mariah Carey the lamb. Yeah, I did. Too. I know, I know, but it, it would have been it would have been too easy. I'm like, you guys would have expected me to come with lamb. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Tell them a little bit about you. <laughs> um, so I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Um, I'm a mental health professional who enjoys a lot of music. I'm still on my little journey to being an aspiring DJ. So we'll we'll see that in the future somewhere, somehow. My equipment's actually sitting right next to me, but we'll get there. Um, and I just have like an ear for things. Like I, it's kind of like one of those people where I can understand what I'm hearing, but I can't really maybe like read it. But like, let's say I would be able to like play it or something and know how that produce or know how that blends. Mm -hmm. It's just something that I've always been kind of been able to do. I think my dad really was like that, always introducing me to that. And we just would sit kind of like how JR and his mom would sit with music. Mm -hmm. We would sit with music. And it's just been great ever since. My catalog library, amazing. Rest in peace to the uh, someone who stole my iPod in college. But you know. You got it. <laughs> oh no. Go ahead. You know, we're not saying it's connected, but no, I was kidding. But um, <laughs> that's so mean. That's terrible. Yes. <laughs> yes. What song did you pick for us today? I picked <laughs> Tracy Spencer Tender Kisses. I mean, like, just like perfect. 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 I mean, I first. I heard it, of course, on Family Matters. And then, like, you know, when the era of, like, downloading things came back into play, I was like, what is that song and who is that girl? Because I did have the single edit for All About Me. I mean, All About You. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I did have the single edit stuff. I was like, I could not never remember, like, you know, where that album was. And I was like, let me download it. Downloaded it. Played it out. Used to play it in high school to college. Like, it was new. Like, I don't know. But it was just the way she sings on that song. I just love it. I love I love the intro, everything. It just sounds so cool. Um, even the, I can listen to the instrumental too, with that like guitar, I just love it. You know, for you picking that song, it just brings me back to us. Oh yes. Colorado. And <laughs> that was my moment when I knew, I was like, I'm gonna love these people for life. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because we were playing music, people, you know what I'm saying? You know, everybody was cooking, we were sipping a little bit. And as soon as this song came on, everybody just, just crewed went together. For it. We went for it. Everybody yes. knew the ad libs, everybody yes. knew everything. I was like, yes. I love them. Yes. <laughs> I love them. I love them. Because it was yes. like, y'all, we was in a we was on some real world tip. Like That's it true. was seven strangers picked to live That's in a true. house. That's <laughs> true. That's true. Yep. <laughs> shout out to our INA crew but it was like crazy and when we did that it was like if y'all see the clip of us in doing that it was like everybody was gone eyes yep. closed mm -hmm. lips in hand nobody cared about anything yes. and everybody was standing up yeah that's true that's true did we finish dinner or we were like i don't even know if we even, i don't even i don't even think we cared then <laughs> no i don't think so we did have drinks we, we we also bonded on the new bird song oh but um yeah that's how it started the new bird that's song a, and then yeah it, we kind of end i think we ended dinner with tender kisses and everybody's just like okay now we've like bonded because like <laughs> in the psych world they always say like once you bond over music you have like a really strong connection with people yeah. and friendship yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, so that that was nice. Yeah. <laughs> that's the bond over that. Yes. Was, was I the DJ? I think I think yes, I played it. You were. Yes, you were. <laughs> yes, you did. Mm -hmm. Love that. Mm -hmm. Kiss that. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's such oh, a I good know. memory. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's why it was like when Elise was like, she picked in the kisses. I was like, no, she didn't. 
She's like, yes, she did. I was like, no, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, she know we got that bond over that record. And yes. I'm like, wow, yes. okay. Uh, okay. I was just like, let me go breathe for a second. <laughs> <laughs> and then let me get myself together. That's why I was like, sis, I'm definitely going to have to have a nice drink before we get Renee. I know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. And, and how has this song influenced either your life or how you listen to music? Mm-hmm. Just listening for just the voice. And I even like the lyrics too. Cause I mean, it's kind of one of those songs where it sounds really good, but she's like really sad and torn up in this song, right? Yeah. Um, so it made me just like appreciate different ways you can kind of maybe sing certain songs, right? We always assume it's gonna be low tempo, low melody, yeah. sad, but it's kind of like when you had that um, that show and it's like um, songs that maybe mean something, but you're like having a good time listening to them and it's really not what it means. Um, so I just always thought it was like a really cool R&B song. Then I listen to the lyrics. I'm like, oh no, girl, she's talking about like a heartache. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. It really, yeah, it just, just appreciation for voice. Cause you know, I'm all about sound. So I just like love the voice, powerful voice. I, I wanted to hear more from that voice. You know, because I kind of compared it to, what is her name? Oh, my gosh. Angela Bofill, like, the way she kind of, like, sang that to me. Yes. And that just connected me to, and I was like, I just love a powerful voice. I love a Vesta. You know, like, hello, congratulations. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I should have picked that one, right? Uh-oh. <laughs> I would have been singing it the whole time. But I, like, send the kisses. Send the kisses. Oh my God. So with it, with that, would you say that is your favorite, you know, um, uh, uh, Tracy Spencer record or is that because what I I see about this is that everybody knows Tender Kisses is her signature record. Right. But her biggest song is This House. Right. But everybody, anybody, when you think about Tracy Spencer, people say Tender Kisses. Nobody even thinks of this house, even though that's the biggest song of her career. Mm-hmm. So goes to show these people, I'm gonna have to take the glasses off for this one. Um, charts does not matter, people. <laughs> because clearly this house was a big song for Tracy, which was like a top three billboard mm-hmm. record. Mm-hmm. But since the Kisses was the number one R&B song, but it only starred at like 40. So it's like, but if we yeah. want to see Tracy Spence in concert, I think a lot of us will rather hear to the kisses than in this house. Just this house is, I mean, it's cute. The video's cute. I mean, I like the positive message. I can mix it with something from Rhythm Nation. I like it. You see how um, there? You see that? Because <laughs> of the break time, I could, I could do that, but it just, it's not as memorable and I think the family matters episode probably helped a lot too because you probably wanted to know who that girl is and she like belted it out on the show you probably weren't expecting her to sing that if you didn't know who Tracy Spencer was initially right Mm -hmm. so I think that kind of helped it too but it I'm you know even though they could have kept Eddie Winslow up off of that wasn't that the (laughs) worst thing you ever heard in your whole life (sighs) and he thought he was singing though like down. He <laughs> thought he did not- something. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> he thought he was blowing, and it was like, and people <laughs> in the audience is like, Woo! And it's mm-hmm. like you're at home, like okay. we didn't need it. Okay, that voice was gone tomorrow and gone today. <laughs> oh, I like that. Mm, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> she, that mm. she, she was because I, I was saying. I was saying, I was like, I'm so confused. confused. <laughs> and I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> Do not. Okay. <laughs> On this episode. Just so oh, y'all know, Renee is like my singing that partner. Thing. That's my singing partner. Oh, listen. That's why I was nervous when she said uh, Vesta and y'all was like, congratulations. Because I was like, uh-oh. This is about <laughs> to go somewhere. Because <laughs> I would have been singing that thing. Okay, sweet, sweet love. But I just love it. I mean, congratulations. Oh, my gosh. It should have been me. It really should have. (laughs) No friend on the street. She said today. Your wedding? Come on. My Um, God. You know I like it. 
I opened up the trouble door. Trouble door. Was drama. Oh my God. <laughs> See, so y'all, y'all getting, y'all getting this. I'm telling y'all, it, when we was in North Carolina, y'all, and them two. <laughs> I, we just we went for it. It was a wrap. It was a wrap. We went for it. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, mean I like no congratulations when I think about y'all. Like I know. And y'all get real deep with it. Too. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, you know, and I I done sang this on like four shows that we done done. Night moves. Oh, I love that. I was just going to sit on the train. and I'm just like, this is so good because the sun was setting too, and then it came in. I was like, this is perfect. Night moves. <laughs> I mean, the right mood. From the diaphragm, people. Learn to sing from the diaphragm. Please, breathe. Okay? Yeah. Get your That's posture it. game on. Okay. All right. Breathe again. You know, you got to do it. You yeah. got to do it. You better. You better. You gotta ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Ooh, I should have picked so, a Sony song, too. Ooh. Yeah. So, so, so why amazing. do you think that, what, what do you think happened with Tracy as far as her, you know, because after Tender Kisses and Loving Me, she kind of went gone. On so like 99. 99. What yeah. do you think maybe would have been was the problem with that and her and 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 all that? Marketing and team and who writes, you know. Um, I don't know. She is she a songwriter as well? Does anybody I know? See I don't her on any songwriting yeah. credits too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's like who who would write for her would be like and production too because remember babyface would have been really good i think like yeah. to write or something i think she needed a ballad again and she needed possibly a duet even if it was like her and another duet. woman or her and another guy like her and a guy would have been really nice to hear and i think it would have it would have added to the discography honey like it would have been another staple we needed something in the mid 90s there because to me you're kind you're in that caliber of the tamia of the shantae Moore. you know yeah. i mean we could even throw shanice in there too but it maybe is probably the same thing where marketing like yeah i writing. think that was the problem when it came yeah. to shanice and you know, yeah they had the same issue they, they didn't know the how to issue. market them yeah. And they're very young. So Tracy was, when she was on Family Matters, she was only 15, but she sounded like someone that was like in their 20s, right? Someone grown. So I don't know if that was the image thing. We don't know if family had issues about it. We don't know much. Do you, you know? think that with that, because it's like, we or me and Elise always talk about this when it comes to Monica. When Monica came out with her first album, she sounded yeah. like a 30 year old woman. This really, show, right? That went through so many relationships with dudes when she was only right. fourteen. Right. Do you think that maybe if she would have got somebody like a Dallas, as far as you know, could it work, or maybe not? Or Tracy needed more of a baby face. You think she she needs more of a baby face because. She doesn't, I don't know, hearing her like something with Monica, I don't think it would have meshed well. Yeah, because Tracy had, though it was strong vocals, strong vocals, there was a sweetness. Yes. Got like like a to me that, that you like, don't have in a Monica. And that's yes. not a diss, that's just a difference. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. So yeah. I would have liked to hear something like that. I mean, we even talked about uh, with it, with like, if she was able to even connect with Quincy Jones, right? But mm. then he already had to me and Tevin, so. Right, right, yeah. right, right. It would have went completely, yeah. I think yeah, that would have been great. Yeah, so, I know, So yeah. she would have got lost in the soil. And then she was down with Capital and. Yeah, Capital, like, where was like their steam that you had to be on there? Like, Thank you, you. like be Sony or somebody. Like, there Ooh. was no steam behind Capitol Records. No. Y'all had, and this girl, and because we oh. all said, like you said, you were just watching her on Donnie Simpson. Yes, this girl really had it. Like, she had the voice. She was pretty. She and was like cool. y'all said, she had yeah, the sweetness in her voice, and it was like y'all couldn't do nothing with this. I was mm-hmm. like, who was her A and R? Like. Y'all had a gold mine here and y'all could have Exactly, worked. exactly. She should have even like been like how Deborah Cox, like mm-hmm. even if she would have sang, no, I mean, I don't know about nobody's supposed to be here, but something along in that line, you know? Right. Yeah, in that lane, yeah. Yes, yeah. even if she went into house music, her voice would have been great for that. Yeah. Great for house music. You know, I mentioned that on the show. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Tracy Smith yeah. could have had that moment. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. she really could. It could have been a lane for her. And I'm just mad that it's like, I guess, and now you see she's not even dealing with nothing no. with the industry. She's not. No, yeah. You can't find her nowhere. No. Nowhere. You can't call her on the phone. Like, you can't no. do nothing. She's I'm gone. Packed it up. It's like, she has such a voice. And that's why when we mm -hmm. was, me and Elise was in our a couple of lives, and we said, uh, Tracy Spencer, um, Shanice, and, um, uh, uh, Sue, should we go left? Uh, should we go right? I'm thinking her name. Should we go left? Or should we go right? Yes, Elise. You know what I'm talking about. Why is this stumping me? Stacey Lattisol. Stacey Lattisol. I was going to mention her. <laughs> yes. I was going to mention her because I'm like, let me be your angel. Hello. Like, it would have been the same thing. Yeah. Even yeah. who produced for her. I mean, it was, that was like way back. But like, you know, that would have been in the same lane. Even and if that's she why they, that with Johnny. them girls don't get a lot of respect as far as Tracy and Stacy and Shanice because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have had the Brandys and the Monicas and the, you know what I'm saying? And, and hey. the Aaliyahs and them girls because they kind of, it kind of showed labels, wait a minute, we can sell these girls, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, there's a way. And I'm like, exactly. we really exactly. could have, but I think once Brandy and Monica and all of them came out. I think Shanice and, and Tracy and all of them ended up being an afterthought. It was like, okay, y'all got us to the to the water. Now we're going to get Brandy and Monica and them to drink it. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Like, and it sucks. And those, like, the mid-90s was changing anyway with sound. So maybe, too, those girls kind of sounded really late 80s to early 90s. Mm -hmm. But to me, with the right production, you could have... You could have spruced that up. You, you could have brought have. it to the forefront. Absolutely. Just, just a, yes. I think strong writing and production, the right team, because I didn't really hear much about that. Even like reading up, I didn't really hear much about promotion for her. Like, I'm sure nobody even really remembers symptoms of true love. Like, nope. it was cute. It was was and not in a bad way it was cute right y'all it's not <laughs> you like know you. i liked it because it even reminded me of janet's song from her first album um he um, doesn't even know i'm alive yes something yep. like poppy like that i kind of like that vibe yeah. so i'm like i don't know and e even the album in 99 i didn't really go through it but those two songs hit like i don't even know what reached on the charts actually yeah, I, I loved it. Like I love that's when, when when we heard Tracy Spencer and that first single, It's All About Me. I was like, me and my mom was like, oh, she's back. Oh, How about you? We, yeah. <laughs> All about know, you. It, right? Yeah. Oh, my bad. All about you. Yes. We thought she was back. It was like, okay, right. cool. And it, you know, it did okay on the billboard. So I was like, okay, this is great. Then you had Shanice come when I closed my eyes. So it was like. The, the girls, girls were back, back. Okay. and it was a perfect time. It was perfect. Perfect. Shante was on the scene. Shante yeah. got a man at home, like yeah. But the thing was, they had these really nice singles, and they didn't have an album to back it up. Right. The albums were spotty. Right, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. right, right. That was the thing. You had this great single, but you didn't have another single to really go to. Honestly, that's, that's true. But then when they, because again, you got their a and thinking like what they were back in the 90s. Back in the 90s, it was all about having that great first single and great exactly. second single. Yeah. That was, even though your albums wasn't that great, but at the <laughs> end of the day, them singles did it. So it kept you kind of like, okay, we're going to pay attention to these right. girls. You know what I'm saying? Right. But then now it became album based and it was like... Same uh, script, but the cast wasn't working. Not really good albums, no. No, yeah, that was the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they used that. There was nowhere else to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Shanti had a little cute, had a cute song. What, what was JD? Um, um, it goes. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh yes, uh, straight up, straight up. Yes, that, that was, was fresh. I, I liked it. that. She was on her yeah. little treadmill in the video, and oh yeah, I remember that. that. Yes, yeah. get it, girl. That was like a bop. I yes, mean, it was. Yes, it I, was. Again, the formula for the albums. I, I, I don't know. Well, we I, all know, you know, the album before then, because that was the the moment in time mm -hmm. that she had. Shantae's got a man, mm -hmm. but then the second single it got stolen from her. Ooh, ooh. Wow. Oh. Mm. Yeah, yeah. If ooh. I gave you love, went to somebody else. And it became if you had my love. 
you know, a very once famous person said, I don't know her. You know, <laughs> I really don't know her. I don't. Sorry, I'm going to do a more edit. I don't know her. I don't know her. We don't know her at I'm all. Just gonna, I'm just going to shake it up. Okay. <laughs> it's like a video about, like, they call it the shady past of you know who. And yeah. I was like, ooh, I'm going to watch it later, but wow. <laughs> yes. Well, Renee, we thank you for hanging out with thank us. You this so was very nice. so great. You. Oh and my God. Yes. where can people find you if you want to be found? Uh, the people can find me on my Instagram, sweetheart underscore misfit, kind of like Nas, half man, half amazing. Um, but anyway, and you know, it, it's you can find me there. You can find me on Twitter with that name as well. You can find me SoundCloud, MixCloud, wherever you like. Um, Spotify, you can find me with my real name, Renee Rogers, if you want to check out playlists as well. <laughs> yeah. Period. Yes. Yeah, the best, the best ear ever. The best music. ear ever. Yes. And I don't say that lightly. Yes. No, she don't. <laughs> At least ain't gonna give people their credit now. I... <laughs> so when she does, please take it. <laughs> but yes, yeah. I, thank you. All right. Well, we'll see you. We'll see you later. So thanks for Bye. hanging out with Bye. us again. Thanks for having me. y'all and welcome back to catch that fan mini episodes where the fans are the stars and we get to know people through their favorite songs yes. and i am naturally elise and that is my bro yeah y'all and today we are talking to another very good friend of ours mika yeah. hey mika what's up y'all hey right. so before we get to what song that you picked to talk about today um, tell the folks about yourself. Uh, I'm Mika. Uh, of course, I'm from Oakland, as you can see my shirt. You know, town business. We bring that into every room we could come into, um, for sure. But uh, just a professional uh, music lover, grew up in it. Um, I'm happy for my, my bro and my sis here. So I'm honored to be here and talk a little bit about uh, what I love <laughs> when it comes to music. So, okay. So tell the good folks what song you picked to talk to us about today. I pick personally one of my favorites. Of course, I'm a huge lover of Luther Vandross. Um, my favorite song per se is on um, the Any Love album, which is I Wonder um, for a specific reason. Of course, anybody that knows me that loves music knows I love background vocals. And this is one of my favorites by him simply because of the background vocals. So, okay. So when were you introduced to this song? Man, uh, you know what? This song honestly came out two days before my mother's birthday. So it's one, it's, it's an ode to her. Um, she always played it. Her and my godmother always played this song. And specifically, it's, it was introduced to me like when they would go out, they would always play this song <laughs> to get them going. Um, and it's also one of my mother's favorite songs when we would do road trips, mother and daughter road trips. She would always play this song. This song will always be on loop to get her, you know, going through the road trip. So that's definitely how I was introduced to it. Nice, nice. Yes. You know, you bugged me out, sis, because I thought you was going to go with Promise Me, for real. I really did. I was like, she going to go I Promise thought you me. Put, I said, they probably going to think I'm going to pick a, a, a single or something that's more popular with everybody. But of course, because the album cuts is always sometimes where the gems are, right? Yeah. So I picked, yeah. I love this song specifically because with better love, people look at that as like a master class of background vocalists when yes. it comes to yes. Luther songs. Mm -hmm. But however, with this one, I think this one is probably maybe 1B when it comes to background vocalists, mm -hmm. when it comes to shining with Luther's like talent when it comes to that. I mean, you have James Ingram in the, the background vocalist. It's all men. There's no women in the background for this one. Mm -hmm. And then literally their parts and it's like the energy that they carry in the song is crazy. So that is the reason why I absolutely love, love this song. And then yeah. it's a mid temp. That's what is so yeah. crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. And me and JR were, we, um, cause JR was like, I wonder why, ha, I wonder, I wonder why she picked. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> no. I wonder why she picked that song. I said, I bet you it's 
the the backgrounds and that bridge. He did. She did. And it's also the like you hear them, they come in, they're probably like just mid when they when the background vocalists first come in mm -hmm. and then they just carry the energy of the song. And I feel like a little bit of their background carry Luther's energy because you can hear the way he ends that song is completely crazy. The way he's like float in between them, you can tell like they even picked up his energy at the end of the song. So that's why I just love how it just like <laughs> elevates all the way through. So, I mean, I love background vocalists. I, I know y'all had Trina uh, Broussard on here and she was talking a little bit about that. I think that is probably like the best things about songs. Yeah, <laughs> that's the absolutely. Best thing about songs. <laughs> absolutely. You know, so it's like, and how can you not pick Luther? who is probably like the goat, to be honest with you, besides Sissy, which he always has, but right. like the goat when it comes to like men specifically, for sure. You know what's yeah. so crazy? You said how they were feeling his energy. Me and Sis did our, our radio show where we was doing to get Freddie Jackson and, and Luther, and we picked Creeping. And you know in there, like, Luther is laughing because he like, yo, y'all killing it right now. And like you said, at the end of this record, you can tell they're matching Luther because you can tell they just feeling it at the end. And it's like, Luther, like, you see I'm that the shit. In, in a lot of his songs, though, they would, like, carry him in it. He's, like, kind of following their lead sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, people think that he's, you know, of course, Luther has that, that basically that, uh, you know, that that when people basically say that he is the one that's like the diva <laughs> in the thing. But yeah, a lot yeah. of times, if you hear his his background vocals, he's actually following their lead, especially when it comes to energy-wise. And he just picks it up to yeah. where he's like floating in between them. That's when the magic happened. That's where the mm -hmm. magic happened. <laughs> when they going off, he's floating in between. I really believe like that is where it comes with. That's the gems of yeah. the music. Yeah. And I think I think part of the reason that like I love bridges of songs is because that's where the background vocalists really get to shine. Uh -huh. Yes. It's more yes. about them because that's usually where the lead artist is doing runs and ad libs and the background is like doing the heavy lifting. Yeah. Which, if you think about it, like bridges was also tied to dance breaks, right? So it gives the background vocalists a time to shine. It's almost like why everybody loves Sylvester's dance, right? Because Martha and Isora is over there just killing it with a dance. Like, you know what I mean? Yes. Like, that's yes. what I'm doing. but it's just yes. like they're killing that. They went in from their singing and then they're just in the background just going dance. And that gets your energy going, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I think that is the beauty of it. A lot of times, I mean, we, we need to get back to like hot bridges and uh, dance breaks mm -hmm. <laughs> so oh. a little bit. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't know how to do all the eight counts and everything. That ain't us. Right. The old folks, we want to get back to a two step. We want to do a little shimmy shake or something, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? That's what I love about like foreign exchange, everybody in their camp. You're gonna get like a dance break and you're gonna get a true bridge, you know. Oh, and yeah, you're, gonna, you're gonna get a true pre-chorus. You're gonna you're gonna get all those elements that you love so much. And, and dance. dance. And because missing. all of that, like we can name multiple songs where we love a bridge, where we yes. love a dance break, where that you'd be like, hold on, that's my part. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> like, you'd be you ready, feel, like, like, like your energy about to shift. Like, yes. you're about to be on the edge of your seat, like, oh, y'all, you know, the bridge and the dance break is where you touch the, the radio tune and you turn it up. Hold up. Wait a minute, I'm about to turn this thing up. Wait a minute, I'm about to hit the I'm about to hit the gas and speed up a little bit. You know, that's that is what we loved about bridges and and dance breaks. I mean, and background vocalists are the basically the gems of that. That's so, and that's what I knew when we went on our trip in Colorado. I always talk about this and I tell everybody when we were singing Luther's uh Don't You Know That. And y'all knew the background. I said, yeah, this is family for life. Because yeah. nobody <laughs> knew this. Like, no, anytime I'm listening to that song, I'm doing backgrounds and all that, and everybody is just singing Luther. And I'm like, when I got there, and I just looked around, I was like, how is this going to go? And all y'all started singing the background. I was like, yes, like, yes. You are. You are. <laughs> <laughs> On Unisys, right? That, that's yes. the, that's I was the best thing about even if you don't you can't you can't you're not a singer singer right you know, uh background vocalists know how to harmonize 
We all been to church maybe one or two days. We probably didn't stay in the choir the whole time. But we been there one or two days. And we be like, come in. All right, y'all, on the one. You are. You know what I mean? Like, come in. You got that one person with the choir director with the hand. Yes. <laughs> Legit. You know, that's, I mean, like I said, that brings your group together. Yeah. I mean, we, we knew we was going to be family for life when it comes to that. But yeah, but like bridges, background vocalists. That is the beauty of a song. Yes. Um, yes, God. Yes, yes God. Woo. So how has um, this song, and I'm just going to say Luther Vandross in general, influenced you in your life or just how you listen to music? You know, I, I, if, if you can't sing, I'm sorry uh, for anybody that's watching um, <laughs> there. I'm <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but I love a singer. I love a singer that can do everything, right? Um, it's one of the reasons, I mean, he produced one of the best background vocalists we have is Lisa Fisher. She right. can sing anything. I love people like Rochelle Farrell. I love somebody who can carry a song and sing. I love somebody who knows their placement in the song. They're not over singing the song. They're not under singing it. They just write in, in, in the pocket, the pocket. <laughs> and know what to do. And Luther has been that for me. Why I love Luther, per se, is because he introduced me to other artists. I'm a huge fan of Dionne Warwick. Sorry, Junior, I know you're a little bit of hater. <laughs> um, but mama understand, mama understand for sure. <laughs> yes, he but he introduced me to all these other because that was his favorite singers. Yeah. It made me dive deep into Dionne work. It made me dive deep into um, Aretha, you know, those album cuts. Even though I grew up and my mother would introduce me to vinyls and everything, because Luther is her guy. She, She's a number one fan. She she stood out like how we stand out for Beyonce or whomever for yeah. tickets. That was her guy, you know? So it's just like, he introduced me into the legends. You know, his songs, he has an album called Songs where he dedicates to his favorite songs by his favorite artists. 94 um, doing, yep. It's how I became a fan of Barbara Streisand, a, a fan of Bette Midler. I mean, he literally... What I love about that is that he always introduced you to who influenced him. And he is your singer's favorite singer, right? So that's like, Thanks. he doesn't even have to give, uh, uh, you know, props to anybody who comes before him mm -hmm. because they already giving him props, right? He, he gave Aretha a, a comeback. Right? Talk, talk <laughs> right? about it. Talk you know what I'm saying? He gave so many people comebacks or, you know, chic right he's he's why we have chic and nile rogers and these legends so it's just like he made you dive deep into the people who influenced him so i mean legit that's how he made an impact on me of and just growing my music knowledge in a way mm -hmm. um so i mean for him that's what he has meant to me honestly for sure so this is so the any love is not your favorite album is it from luther? no my favorite album by luther is forever for always for love Mm. Um, what's so different about that album that's your favorite because of, of all the others he's done it actually has one of my favorite up tempo joints by him um is it sweetest love i'm i'm, I'm probably messing up the, the sweetest title. one the, the sweetest, sweetest one yes um it's probably one of my favorite up tempo luther songs probably top five honestly for me <laughs> um and promise me right the way he carries promise me it's absolutely nuts. Um, forever, for always, for love. That's a song. I mean, Layla took it and ran away with it. I mean, it's hard to take a Luther song that he probably took from somebody else. And then <laughs> right, right. right. But Layla took that, but it's just a beautiful song to me. Sometimes him and Nat Adderley, the way they wrote and produced songs, it was just, they stand the test of time. Yes. And I look at those songs and I love the album cover, him in pink and everything. It's just a bright album. I just yeah. love how that album is consistent. Each song runs into each other beautifully. Yeah. Um, not most people can do that. Um, so I that is probably why it's one of my favorite Luther albums, if not my favorite, for sure. You, you brought up Layla, and this is what I wanted to ask you. When I think when you pick one, uh, I wonder. Anytime that beginning start, I always think about Smile from Layla. Mm -hmm. Like the beginning of that. And I'm like, and I'm like, wait a minute. Didn't Andre Fisher do that, which is connected to Brenda, Brenda Russell, which right. is, he produced if 
only one night that Luther took and remade. I'm like, all the like, puzzles this, fit. I mean, you see how that carries on, right? So it's just yeah. like, connect those dots. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> they go together. <laughs> they go together. Um, together. No, um, yes. you, but you see how he has influenced singers, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He has influenced basically these singers or a sound. Because some people pigeonhole him just to being a singer. Yeah. And he's a vocal arranger. He is a writer. He is a producer. He's done it all. Mm -hmm. And at a high level. Yeah. At point, he got to a point to his career where he was just telling people no. <laughs> so like to the point because he was the first call to make right mm -hmm. especially after that Aretha joint I mean he gave Aretha a, a a banger right jump to it right yeah yeah when she be scatting her life away like <laughs> like when, when when have we heard Aretha scat like that as, <laughs> for sure I was like is this Luther senior or junior but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know what was going on but that is the beauty of it I mean and yeah. for you to carry it to Layla right like Layla's dad is Donnie like Dude, oh she's my god influenced by luther but she is yeah um so yeah. i mean it's just really yeah you could tie the, all those sounds and vocal arrangements honestly mm -hmm. to him yes yeah well we hope our brother mark likes this <laughs> hey bullying works okay <laughs> no 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 i mean I mean happy birthday to mark too as well i want to give a shout out to him but um yeah. you know he taught me a lot because I mean, when he first came into it, our, our brother Mark, who spoke about Shaka on here, um, yeah. he he wasn't really into male singers of Luther, and I was a little I was a little offended. <laughs> yes, you <laughs> were. <laughs> <laughs> but what he had taught me is that music is personal. Music is a personal journey. That's and literally, he hit us a few weeks ago. Was like, yo, I just heard Change Glow, and I could see what I could hear what you guys hear now, like. The yeah. way the quotes on change, like Luther ain't just his solo stuff. Like right. to hear him go back to hearing him in change, going back to hear him um with the I forgot the, the gentleman's name. Um uh shoot. Well you know Luther. he's loving with Shaka too now. Yeah, so I, mean, literally, I mean you can just hear that influence and it takes you back, right? That's what I say why mm -hmm. he's important to me is because he'll make you go back and to hear classic records. Yeah. That here now where yeah. where you didn't even think he was on it and it's like yo that's him <laughs> like that's him i thought he would i thought he just started in 79 or 78 with change but like you can hear him even further than that i mean his background work with roberta flack i was just about to say that yeah it's something magical i mean yeah. she really had to fire the man right <laughs> how are you working <laughs> with me like you know, but it's like Roberta Flack, I mean, some people try to hint that she's boring, but really hearing those melodies and how her vocals are layered yeah. really can teach you some things or really about how um, vocals should be layered on a song, mm -hmm. honestly. And Luther is in the background just killing it. And you, yeah. don't, you don't even notice because he's hitting different tones and stuff. So it's crazy. Yes. So, I mean, yeah. that's, that's the beauty about uh, Luther Vandross for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, man. I think I think you taught me a little something today, Mika. <laughs> definitely did. <laughs> it's 2021. We still early. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we definitely appreciate you hanging out with us and tell the people where we can find you if you want to be found. Oh, for sure. Um, I mean, don't be hitting me with no weird stuff for sure, but um, oh. it's don't do uh, it. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on Twitter, uh, Miss Mika Love, which is M S Mika M I C A L U V. Um, definitely, I'm always down to talk music. Don't come argue with me about it though, because you'll get blocked. But definitely, early, early. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm always open to talking about uh, music, sports, whatever. So you could definitely find me there for sure. All right. Well, again, thank you. It's an honor that you came to hang out with us. Yes, it is. I feel honored. I'm proud of you guys. This is just the beginning, for real, for your success. So keep growing, keep glowing. It's only up from here, for sure. Yes, yes. Thank you. Bye, y'all, right. and we'll see you on the next episode of Catch This. Oh.